Hello, this is Hateless Gaming here. I want to bring you a awesome HELOC guide on doing Tier 3 Electrical Abyss. Um, this guide's going to be really simple. Uh, you should be able to follow it fairly easily. Uh, we're going to go over it like I do burners. Um, we'll go over the uh, fitting first and kind of explain why. Uh, we do an active fit because active fits actually have a lot more resistance to energy neutralizers than passive fits. And there's a couple examples in this guide of that. Uh, I also have a whole video talking about why we do active over passive on helos uh, that you can check out uh, in the description there. Uh, but the fit's really simple. We have a drone link augmentator, uh, meta, not meta, just regular tier one. We have cheap rapid light missile launchers just to help with damage a little bit. In the rigs, we have three solidifiers, one tier two and two tier one. And then we have two multi-spectrum hardeners, a copacetic shield boost amplifier, and then the two modules that are expensive on the ship are the Republic Fleet Large Cap Battery and the Pythum C-Type Medium Shield Boosters. Uh, with really good skills, you could probably run a Tier 2. Uh, and if you go up to an A-Type and a better prop mod, which is a YS-8 Compact Afterburner, you could probably go up into higher tiers uh, with a few upgrades from the ship uh, in tank to be able to survive. And then also uh, in DPS once you get your skills up. And then uh, we have three drone damage amplifiers. So the fit is really easy. Uh, how you fly it depends on the room, but generally the afterburner stays on 100%, so do the two hardeners. And then if you need additional cap, you just shut off the booster, and it is completely stable inside of an electrical abyss. Like 100%, it does not burn out. Um, how to tell if you're going to be cap stable inside of an electrical abyss, which is very important, um is you look at your percentage right here and if it is less than or if it is greater than negative 100 uh so if it's negative and then two digits and then the decimal point you are 100 percent stable inside of an electrical abyss it's very easy to uh remember that and and go with that uh next i'm gonna go over the skills with the helo uh, this is a fairly low skill point build and is designed for a, a player to be able to take an invite code and specifically put in skill points for the invite code to uh, to fly the ship and it should be able to do tier 3 on day 1 without too much trouble. We're going to go over the skills that are very important. Uh, you want decent navigation skills. Uh, you want your navigation as high as you can get it. Uh, as an alpha, I believe you can only get this to 3. And then you want the afterburner skill to be able to use the afterburner and make the afterburner a little bit more cap efficient. And then I believe acceleration control also helps. So you want this really high as well. You want to get to 550, 600 meters a second with the with the afterburner. Um, that's what's really important. That speed is is super super helpful. So the, those navigational skills are really important uh, to get up. Uh, next up in engineering. Uh, you just need the the CPU management, power grid management, and weapon upgrades and advanced weapon upgrades to be able to fit your ship. That is it. Uh, so you basically get the bare minimum skills to fly the Gila, and then you 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 get the and then you would use power grid management and weapon upgrades to uh, fix your CPU problems, and then you get a couple points into advanced weapon upgrades to finish. Your power grid problems you shouldn't have many i think this fits fairly easy to fit it's a little tight on cpu but it swims in power grid so you're just gonna have to watch the cpu and there are options that you can do like making one of these instead of being a drone damage amplifier tech 2 you can make it an aek drone damage amplifier uh here to save cpu so if you have hardware and you select modules and drones uh drone upgrades uh, rather than doing a tier 2 drone link augmentator, you can do the AEK uh, drone damage amplifier, uh, which is entirely an option. And each one you swap out will save you about 10 CPU, but it'll lose you a little bit of DPS, if that makes sense. So we, we got six CPU there and we lost a little bit of DPS, which is less than ideal. Um, the next thing that you wanna make sure is that you have thermodynamics trained at least to three. Uh, this will allow you to overheat your boosters and overheat your hardener and overheat your prop mod, which is incredibly helpful being able to overheat um, 
and then in the shields tab, we don't really need a whole lot in armor um, because it's 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 shield tank. Uh, you need all of these to three uh, to be runnable. Uh, getting shield compensation higher than three will save you some capacitor, but I believe alphas can't train anything past three in the shield skills. And tactical shield manipulation to four is required for the T2 adaptive emblem, which you can do as an Omega. Uh, and then in targeting, we don't have anything trained. I believe this is base. I think I might have trained target management at a couple points. Uh, we don't use anything in gunnery. Uh, you just need to be able to use a light missile launcher. Uh, all the support skills are optional, uh, as a light missile launcher is not required to do this. We do it purely on drones. Um, and then after you can fit your ship and you have everything on your ship, um, so you have all the modules on your ship, you're, you're not over on power of it or CPU. Sorry, I got to put that drone damage amplifier back on. Uh, but once you're, you're you have everything fit and you're not over on power of your CPU, and then you have your your 550 600 meters a second navigation, those are the numbers that you need to hit to be able to survive most of the rooms, or actually all of the rooms. It's not most. It's 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 all of them. Um, once you hit those numbers, uh, you want to spend the rest of your skill points that you have available to improve your drones. Uh, where is this going to tap? There it is. So drone durability to two or three uh, helps out a lot with your drone's durability. I don't have problems with them dying. There's a couple rooms where this is helpful, uh, and I do showcase it in the uh, in, in the demonstration coming up right after this. Uh, drone interfacing is a big one. You you really want to get this one to three. Uh, it, it, three is the max for an alpha, and then drone sharp shooting, uh, and then drones to five or drones to two. I think is all that's required for this. And then you need medium drone operation to three, I believe is max for alpha, uh, will help damage uh, a lot because you're using medium drones. And then, uh, yeah, basically get your drone support skills up. It'll help them a lot. And uh, you'll have a much better time doing things. But it's basically drone AV on skips control range. Drone interfacing adds a lot of damage. Drone sharp shooting helps their range. You want this one to three as well. Drone navigation makes them navigate faster. I think they're all three is max for alpha. So just get them all to three as quickly as you can, but uh, most of them to two with drone interfacing to three should be enough uh, to, to do what you want to do uh, and, and have enough DPS to clear the rooms. But that's that's really it for the skills. They're super e easy, and I think shield rigging will reduce the drawback on the solidifiers, which will reduce your signature radius, and that does help a little bit. It's not going to be night and day, but it does make a difference, and it makes your life a little bit easier. Um, on the capacitor, you do want to make sure you're negative 100. If you don't have uh, enough capacitor skills, the skills that help your capacitor are capacitor management and capacitor systems operation. I can't remember what the maximum level for alpha is. I want to say it's it's four and three, if I remember correctly. And then uh, the other skill that will help your capacitor a lot is shield compensation. And then what will help a very little bit, but will help in navigation is training the afterburner skill. Uh, but uh, acceleration control is more important for speed than the afterburner skill, and so is navigation. So worry about these guys first. And then evasive maneuvering makes you turn a little bit easier, uh, which is really nice. And it's a nice little quality of life thing. Uh, that's all for the skills. Um, and then to the, the filaments that we get to get them uh, when you buy your Hilo. Uh, I tend to do Abyss and, and Gita, which is a, a terrible idea. I recommend you go somewhere else, but I stream it, so Gita is really the safest place for me to do them. Um, but this fit is specifically designed for you new players to run fierce electrical filaments, and I realize that there are 3.5 million SK piece, and that you're going to feel like sometimes you didn't make S going into the Abyss, but if you keep on doing them and keep on running through sites, you will make ISK. Uh, this is a result of about uh, 20 sites. Uh, we have 500 million esc, and it took me about four four hours to do this, four or five hours to collect this loot. So, this is a really good example of the income it makes. And I even got a special relation scope book, which I sold for 400 million esc uh, during that time, and a couple of really nice blueprints, which I'm going to give to my my main to build. Um, so it's a very profitable thing to do. Uh, 
yeah but enjoy the demonstrations on them uh in the comments make sure you you comment what you like make sure to like and comment and subscribe on this video and tell me what you think and tell me if i'm missing some some rooms that you think are stressful and then uh there's one room that i didn't get and it's a triple vedmic room you can get a room that has three vedmix and it's just very important to kill the vedmix as quickly as you can that's that's all that i'm going to say about vedmix they're really easy to deal with you just have to kill them first because they spool up to do a lot of damage um and if if there's neutralizing you always kill them first uh that's really all i have to say uh fly fun enjoy your time in eve online and enjoy the demonstrations there's a lot to learn from here i got like 15 examples of rooms it's not just a single site that i'm showing you guys i showed you guys basically all the hard parts of an entire eight hour stream that i got in abyss and uh enjoy So this is an example in the Lashex where we got a Starving, a Striking, and a Renewing. And it looks like we also have some Dampening going on too. Uh, but getting rid of these guys and getting rid of the Renewing guys is going to be critical in order to make sure that they don't rep from each other. So Renewing is always primary, even when there's a Starving, uh, because that time loss sucks. And we're not going to be in range of the Starving for him to actually hit us for a moment. Uh, so knocking out that renewing guy uh, really reduces the time that we spend in this site. And then we can kind of just deal with... Um, you would be playing EVE anyways, might as well stream it lol. Yeah, right? Um, and then uh, we'll kill the starving right here. Taking a little bit of cap pressure from him. You notice we haven't turned anything off yet. Uh, and now that there's no more uh, remote reps or powerful remote reps because the renewing is down. Uh, we're in a much better spot, and now that guy's down, and this guy's down, and we're pretty much done with the room, and then we'll go ahead and deal with Frigus and clean it up. But this is another situation that can happen with the flash chicks, and I just wanted to show you guys. So this is uh, four flash chicks here. Uh, they're really easy to deal with. I'm trying to find them in space. Uh, we just kind of don't fly directly at them, turn on our afterburner. Uh, and in this event, we got a starving flash chick, so we're going to kill that guy first, and then the tangling right after. Our drones are in space, it's going to go straight for the Starving. Uh, once the Starving is dead, we can turn this on without a problem. And since we're at full cap, we're just going to go ahead and turn on our capacitor. Uh, and the drones will go there, and then they'll mop these guys up real quick. This is a really short room. Uh, we want to go for the Starving or Blinding first, uh, depending on what we got, and then Renewing after that. And then after that, uh, we're just going to mop them up. And it ends up being really easy. Uh, last sticks are easy as long as you don't directly approach them. And as long as you kill them very rapidly. Uh, you don't want to shoot other things before you shoot last sticks. If there are last sticks in the room, you want to shoot the last sticks first every time. Because if you do that, they die quickly. If you don't, they remote rep each other. And the more there are, the faster they remote rep each other and the worse it gets. So it can kind of snowball out of control if you don't kill them right away. with alpha so this is the triple lash spawn it's really easy to deal with we just have to kill them rapidly uh so we're looking for a way out of the blue clouds because there's a lot of blue clouds here we're gonna lock these guys up sometimes with these lash you get um uh, you get one that dampens you and it's very important to kill the damper uh lash first it, it'd be a blinding lash if you see that set your drones on it immediately uh, and then you'll have no problem killing it. Uh, it'll, it'll, you'll, you'll have it unlocked and then your drones, once they start attacking it, will continue to attack it. Uh, and then after blinding, renewing is your second priority, and then tangling is the third priority. I'm probably doing these out of order for this engagement, but uh, when you come into contact with Lashix, it's important to kill them quickly. That's the key to doing Lashix rooms. Uh, and that's it for Lashix. Uh, they happen very fast. Uh, but if you let them, re uh, what they do is they remote repair each other. And if you let them remote repair each other, you're going to have a bad time. And now we're done with the three Lashix, about as fast as we'd be done with three Frigs. Because they're almost dead when you first get into the room, and it ends up being really easy. So here we have a single Vedmic with a few Tangling Demovix. Uh, regardless of the Eeyore that we see, uh, we will always focus on the Vedmic. A Starving Vedmic does as much damage as a uh, regular Demovic or a Striking Demovic or, or a Striking Vedmic. So you always want to kill 
Vedmix first, regardless of what other EOR you have. They are downright scarier on their DPS. I'm just going to reiterate. Uh, Vedmix are first pretty much regardless of other factors. Um, the only exception is if there's a starving Vedmix and a Vedmix, you always shoot the starving first. Uh, otherwise, you always kill Vedmix first because they hurt like hell. And that's all I really have to say about this room. It, it's a pretty easy room overall. You kill the Vedmix and then you're in the clear. Uh, but um, hopefully I'll get a triple Vedmix room soon and I'll be able to demonstrate that. So this is a villa spawn. Uh, they're really common and they look really scary because they drop a little bit uh, or kind of little drones. And uh, this also has uh, Vedmix. Whenever you see a Vedmix, the Vedmix is priority. Uh, Vedmix full up and a solo Ved has enough DPS to kill you. Uh, not the villas, but the, the, the regular ones. I'm having a hard time getting the Vedmix spawn today. Uh, but you always want to kill Vedmix first. Uh, and with the villas, you just have all these little drones killing you. And at each time you kill one of the NPCs that uh, that is called Villa, uh, five of these drones will just become inactive and they'll stop doing anything. So it's very important that you kill the hosts instead of these little drones. You just kind of ignore the Bile Swarmers. Uh, they don't do a lot of damage individually, but as a group, they kind of add up. And uh, if you see Vedmix or Starving, you would prioritize those. Uh, but Vedmix is priority over starving every single time. You don't, do not want to give Vedmix the opportunity to spool up. As you can see, we got one down. Uh, we're in a better spot, but it's continuing to spool up on us and do more and more damage. We do want to end that thing as quickly as possible. Um, and it makes it really, really easy. Uh, whenever you see a Vedmix, you just kill it first and uh, ignore everything else. Is allowing them to spool up is, uh, is a death sentence. One does spool up to enough DPS to kill you. And once you clear the vet mix, you're in a good spot. Uh, Alright, so this is another slightly scary room. We have a bunch of starving Demovix, and we'll just clear out the starving first, and then we'll just knock out Demovix. Uh, but the uh, the DPS will spool up really quickly, and we just want to knock them out really quick. Uh, but it's important to watch your capacitor when you're dealing with a bunch of starvings. So you do want to pulse the shield booster as much as you can, and kind of make it as simple as you can for yourself, uh, and rep as needed. Uh, and just manage your cap while you kill the first couple, and then you're fine after that. You can just leave the uh, shield booster running, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. But yeah, uh, really easy to deal with a bunch of Demovix. You just want to kill the starving first, because uh, they are faster than you. You don't have to worry about webifying or anything. Just kill them first, and you'll be A-OK. Okay. And... Uh... So this is a, a Tesra or a Grip Spawn. And the problem with these guys is they do a lot of damage. So we don't want to get close to them right away, even though they're a strong resist. Uh, it is possible for all three of these guys to be EM uh, in, in spark, spark Grip is what you're watching out for. And it's very important when you fight these guys uh, to keep an eye on their, their boxes. So they have red boxes right now. And if these boxes change from red to yellow, you want to immediately pull in your drones because they'll they do a lot of damage and they can kill your drones very fast. Uh, so hopefully we can get an example here uh, in this little clip here uh, and show off how much damage they do the drones. But what will happen is they'll switch to your drones and it's not fun. Once you get one left or two left uh, when you have high resist to them, uh, you can tank them. You don't have to worry so much about staying far far away from them, uh, but you do want to kill them very quickly. Uh, but again, we're, we're watching these boxes and making sure they don't go yellow. So they just went yellow and all my drone shields are gone. So we immediately, the moment that turns yellow, we pull in our drones and we launch new drones. This will pre preserve your drones and keep them alive. So now they're shooting me again rather than their, uh, rather than my drones. We throw two new drones out and continue doing the same thing where we watch their health. Or not their health, but uh, our drones indication will be too late. Uh, they'll get a second shot off and they'll, they'll do a lot of damage to your drones. But you do want to make sure that when these turn yellow, you pull them right in. Very important. Otherwise, you will lose drones and you'll not be a happy camper. A Loving the beanie. Here. Thank you, Harpy. 
All right, so I went yellow. We're pulling in the drones. We'll probably be shooting this guy with our missiles too. So you see, he, he got a second shot and it took some armor damage. So we'll launch two new drones. We'll do the same thing. And then we'll kill these filled weavers. Sometimes filled weavers spawn, sometimes they don't. Uh, before we kill the third one, I, I want to knock out the field weavers because uh, we will end up with a. Uh, oh, seven. They, they just. They fly away and they're a headache to kill. Timur, Timulger, uh, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. That's two Twitch Prime subs in a row. I do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Uh, we got that guy going down and then uh once we kill this last field weaver because we don't want him to just kind of fly away once we kill the uh ember grips um we'll kill this guy and that's the end of the room and then you see he went yellow box so we're immediately going to pull in our drones and hope that he doesn't get a second shot on us we could pull in that one drone but just mashing shift r tends to work a little bit better for me and uh, then we'll go ahead and throw two more drones that are on full shield I'll throw those guys out. And that's it. Super easy. Little video collection. So this is the three spark grips that are super scary. Uh, with all three of them being spark grips, we do have to be really careful uh, and kind of run away. Uh, we need to kill one like right away. Um, but if we let these guys get close or we uh, don't kill them quickly enough, uh, we can be in a lot of trouble, so we want to buy as much time as we can by kind of not really flying away from them, but flying perpendicular so that they don't get to like immediately approach us. I did want to get out of that, that blue cloud right away. Maybe I turned the wrong direction, but they're spark grips and we're in a electrical fire or in an electrical abyss. So our EM resistance is really low in here. So we need to kill these guys before they start doing damage to us. It's very critical. Uh, once we kill two, we'll be okay. Uh, but it's very important that we kill them as quickly as possible. Uh, and then, of course, with the grip spawns, as soon as the yellow box, we want to pull them in. You see that one shot brought the drone down a lot, and then it shot us. Got a wrecking shot for 2200 damage, which is really brutal. They normally don't do that. Um, we're going to pull in the drone since they, they yellow boxed us. And then continue on firing. Uh, and get the new drones out. Like I got my drones in, we got two drones going out. And uh, we'll continue trying to kill these guys as rapidly as possible. Uh, but three spark grips is the scariest grip spawn that you can get in this Gila. Because our lowest resistance is EM. If we look at the fitting window, uh, we only have 25% EM resist. Once we kill two, we're pretty much in a good spot. We're in a lot better spot than when there's three. But if we were to control space right now, I believe this thing could still kill us. So we do want to be careful. So, and uh, we're just about done here. As soon as this guy dies, we're, we're safe. We can go ahead and get the loot. Uh, but yeah, that's super easy to deal with the grip spawns. Just make sure you don't let them kill you. Uh, so this is a uh, spark grip, spark grip, and blast grip with snare casters. When you get the grip spawns with snare casters, you always kill the snare casters first. Because if they web you and hold you in range for the uh, for the grips, that's more dangerous than the grips themselves. Uh, so you want to knock out the snare casters first. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're in for a bad time. So we're going to knock those down, and then we'll go for the two spark grips. Uh, this is actually a really scary room. And once the snare casters are dead, we're in a good spot to finish clearing out the room. And just like that, we've got it. But we, we don't want to panic and see that there's spark grips and be like, oh, we need to kill those first. No, you need to have the fundamentals of your ship to survive. And that is speed and your capacitor are the two most important things. And the things that target paint you are also kind of scary too, depending on the room. So you do want to definitely pay attention to the kind of aggro that you're taking and what E-War there is and know the weaknesses of the chip are big weaknesses that we're not fast. So we do want to knock these guys out as quickly as possible. And now we're in a good spot. We have a spark grip and a blast grip. We'll be okay. So it's really nice when you get uh, just the Drifter battleship. Uh, you just get a high transversal with the battleship itself. 
and then go straight for the battleship. Uh, our drone control range is 60 kilometers. So we're just kind of waiting for that, and I failed to repair because I was too busy hitting record. Um, but basically, we're going to go straight for Karen here. I'm going to lock her once she's within 657. Uh, and we're going to kind of slowly spiral in very gently here. And once we're within 57, we'll be able to lock in, lock onto her. What we don't want to do is we don't want to directly approach her. Uh, in the meantime, we probably could be killing one of these guys. Uh, but now I got Karen locked up. We're going to go ahead and send the drones after Karen. And they'll go over there and kill Karen. We just keep our transversal up with Karen. And then after Karen's dead, we'll deal with the rest of the spawns. Uh, and it'll end up being a pretty good experience overall. Uh, Karen just kind of dies. We keep our transversal up and survive. And it's no big deal. Looks like Karen's shooting the drones, which is rare. Uh, which means I'm going to go straight for this right now. Wow, well, they're all going for the drones. We do want to watch for Karen to switch back to us when we're doing this. Because if she switches back to us, we want to be able to uh, quickly get our transversal back up. As we get this loot. Karen's taking damage. We'll just keep that transversal up. Then we're going to watch our drone health because it's, it's rare that Karen has to switch to the drones. Things are starting to come back to me now. And, uh, yeah, we just kind of kill Karen and have a good time. And then we'll clear everything else up, and then we can be at the gate, ready to go, once the room is clear. As soon as Karen dies, we just kind of approach the gate and hang out with that. Just like that, Karen's taken care of. Nice and easy. All right, so here's another Karen spawn. So we have the Drifter Frontline Battleship. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of turn uh, 60, 70 degrees over, mitigate damage, and then remember how I said if there's no chargers, you always want to kill the entanglement first. You kill the entanglement and then the no chargers, and you can serve as much cap as you can in the meantime. So we're going to shut off our repper, and then we are going to only rep as needed. Uh, the reason that we have pull damage here is because uh, this is the uh, this is right after the example that you will either see before or after this, where I uh, did a, a double martial spot. Uh, but we we always kill the entanglement first. It's very critical uh, because if they web us, we're going to take a lot more damage from Karen, and it's really going to screw screw us over. Guapo taking the additional damage from Karen. Uh, thank you for the 100 bits. I really appreciate that. Um, and we're just going to keep our transversal up with Karen while we kill the three neutralizers. And then once the three neutralizers are dead, uh, we'll be in a position to kill Karen. As you can see, they're dying really rapidly. And at this point, we could probably leave our repper on full time to the 50% cap remaining. And we're not going to run on a cap before we kill these two. We're pretty much in a good spot. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could turn towards this. We just want to avoid this big blue cloud. It'll cause a lot of extra damage on us with Karen. And again, we're maintaining our, our transversal. Kind of coming up towards the edge. So let's go ahead and make a turn. You can kind of turn in a little bit. You don't want to make a uh, direct 90 degree turn away with Karen. As if you slow down, you're going to do, or you're going to take a lot of additional damage. And that's never good to take the additional damage from her. Uh, so now that we've dealt with the newts, I'm going to make a turn kind of up here. And I'm trying to kind of turn my direction uh, not towards Karen uh, to mitigate as much damage and kind of make my way to the can. And that's pretty much all there is for Karen. Once he's in range, or once she is in range and you're doing damage with your drones, it's pretty easy peasy. Just make sure that you keep your transversal up and you'll be okay. So Bethic is a lot like Karen, and I'm going to make sure that we put this one in after Karen. Uh, but the trick is just to kind of keep your transversal up and then uh, kill the flight forgers if they if they're there and then you kill the Bethic and it just has a lot of HP and takes a little bit of time to kill 
but other than that, it's a really easy spawn to handle. Uh, you just keep your transversal up, stay out of blue clouds, uh, and uh, watch for him to pop into uh, what he does sometimes pop into is uh, in, the, in the tracking pylon. Uh, and then he's just really easy to handle. You just kill him. Really not that difficult. You kill his forgers to make it a little bit easier. And you stay outside of these blue clouds. This is a really bad room for us. We got a really big blue cloud. Uh, and then you kill Bethic as soon as you kill the support. If there's target painters, I like to kill those too. Uh, but I don't really worry too much about uh, fog casters and gaze dimmers. But you do want to knock out uh, the guys that target paint you and the guys that web you uh, before you start working on Bethic. And then you just kind of kill them. Or, sorry, Overmind. It's not Bethic. It's it's, it's Overmind. Because uh, it's always named Overmind, regardless of what tier you're in. Um, yeah, and that's, that's how easy it is. He's mostly shields, and once he dies, he dies. You just keep your transversal up and tank him and call it good. I only have one drone out, so... It's taking a little bit longer than it could. So this actually happened in the same abyss where we did the demonstration where I took a lot of damage uh, from the two marshals. And the way to deal with the Thunder Child room is exactly the same as dealing with the... Uh, is exactly the same with dealing with the, uh, the marshal spot. You just go really fast in a direction and kill the Thunder Child really quickly. Uh, this one's a little bit easier, uh, but sometimes they're mixed with marshals. Which is something that you want to keep in mind and it's also possible to get four marshals or uh two marshals and two thunder childs it's very possible um but yeah you just kill it and you end up okay but this spawns a little bit easier than the last one uh with the uh marshals and then of course we're going to kill the or afterwards but it's very important that you kill the marshal or thunder child first whichever you have in the room and then just kind of clean up the rest of the room afterwards So this is a uh, martial battle, uh, a martial battleships room. Uh, the biggest importantest thing is that we stay out of this blue cloud and we move fast. So I'm just going to point us in a direction, turn this on, uh, and the the cloud is is or the edge is over here, and so we're going to go like kind of the opposite way and stay away from the edge, and then we're going to kill these as quickly as possible and turn on our reps because uh, these things do do a lot of damage. Uh, they're still locking us, and here we go taking damage. And they also give a little bit of count pressure. Not a lot, uh, but they do give count pressure. And the idea is that we kill these things as quickly as possible. Uh, and then we, we ignore everything else in the meantime. I suppose we could start throwing missiles at the uh, at these target painter guys. But the very important part is that we fire and kill the marshals ASAP. Target painters are not treating us nicely. So that first marshal is about to go down. And once that first marshal goes down, we'll be okay. We can overheat the afterburner if we're feeling a little tense on damage. That extra speed will mitigate a lot of the incoming DPS. So now we're gonna go for the second marshal. And again, we're just going fast in a straight line is the key here. And this was like literally a worst case scenario. We, we have a couple of target painters and two marshals and we just continue moving fast, super fast. That is the key until both of the marshals are dead. Once both of the marshals are dead, we're in a really good spot. You can go ahead and turn off this overheat and uh, call it good. Then hopefully we don't run into another room like this and take more armor damage. Uh, overheating the afterburner is the single best thing you can do. Uh, and then if you are still uncomfortable after overheating the afterburner, uh, you can start overheating the, the hardeners as well. Uh, do not overheat your repper on this, as the repper makes a lot of heat really fast. So you, you want to avoid overheating the, the repper. And then once the marshals are dead, you can go ahead and turn and start scooping your loot. And the rest of the room is really easy. It's just really fast. You just got to go super fast. So this is a Kikamura room. And when we get the Kikamura room, we have to kill Kikamoras as fast as possible. And these sometimes get intense. So we're gonna lock up all the Kiko Morris. And we're gonna ignore these two starving Demovix, even though that count pressure sucks. And we are gonna kill Kiko Morris as fast as possible. And we're gonna conserve some cap. Uh, the other thing is that Kiko Morris like to shoot your drones. So you gotta watch your drone health. So you kinda got a lot going on in this room here. Uh, and we just really wanna kill these Kiko Morris as fast as possible. 
doesn't matter what direction you fly in. Uh, you do, of course, want to avoid uh, certain clouds. Uh, but if you don't kill the Kikamoras fast enough, they will tear you apart. And they do spool up. And they spool up fast enough that it's about the same rate for this fit. And my current skills, it's about the same rate that they spool up that I kill them. So it doesn't really reduce the damage until you've killed the last one. So you really want to kill these guys as quickly as possible. And we actually did really well in this room. We've killed all but two Kikamoras. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and start locking up these frigates. And we want to knock out these Kikamoras as, again, as rapidly as possible. Uh, after we knock out the Kikamoras, we'll go ahead and knock out the, the starving. And then we'll be fine. Looks like we got one more Kikamora. And we're fine. As you can see on the DPS graph, this, even though we only have one Kikamora left, we have, we're taking more damage than we were initially in the room. So, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the Kikamora spool up really rapidly and make up for the, uh, when their buddies die. Uh, so you do want to kill them. And again, watch your drones because the Kikamoras will swap off your drones sometimes. Uh, and they kill your drones really rapidly because they have really high tracking stats. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's it for the Kikamora room. Uh, it's really easy to deal with as long as you kill the Kikamoras first. If you ignore them and kill them last, they'll tear, tear you apart very rapidly. Uh, but yeah, that's how we deal with Kikamoras. Super simple. Uh, yeah. Or this one. So this is a very scary Kikamora spawn. Uh, we're going to immediately drop our drones. And we're they're all tangling. Uh, and one's a striking. Uh, we're going to go for the tangling first. All drones are going to go out and fire, and we're going to turn on our repper right away because there's nothing that moots us. And we're just going to try and kill this. There's no clouds or anything to work. Well, I guess there's a blue cloud and a yeet cloud right there. Uh, but all we're going to do is we're just going to try and apply as much damage to these Kikamoras as possible because there's no way we're outrunning them. Uh, we're about to get webbed down, and we're going to watch our drones and knock these guys out as quickly as possible. Keep on going there and fire them. Got these guys out. Looks like one of the drones is taking damage from the striking Nebevec. I'm going to go ahead and recall the one. I normally don't recall one, I'll return both. Uh, but in this case, we're going to uh, recall one. And hopefully, I'll get the drones to do the same thing that I'm doing here. No, he's not going to do that. Uh, this is bad, I've split DPS, uh, but I'm waiting for this drone to return. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and shift all the drone to the same thing as we're firing at. Maybe I should have shifted my firing. We're gonna throw that guy out. Uh, that Kikamora is now taking, or that drone is now taking damage very rapidly. And like I said, we just gotta kill the Kikamoras really fast and do our best to keep the drones alive. I think I'm just going to wait a second here. We're going to knock out the striking Kikamora. I'm going to approach the cache. And then once that Kikamora is down, we'll be in a good spot. Then I'll pull on the drones to mitigate the, uh, incoming damage. Say hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hi. And once this last Kikamora is down, we'll take out the striking Demovic and call it room. Fonsui says hi. So this room looks terrifying because we got a bunch of dissipators. Uh, we're not too worried about this entangler in this case because everything's faster than us. Uh, but we are worried about the, all these dissipators. And what we want to do we want to not run out of cap so let's turn that off and let's start working on dissipators here and uh what we're going to do is we're going to uh work to balance our capacitor use with our shields as best as we can and then we're going to kill all the dissipators um before we die is the goal but we'll kind of rep as we need to uh and then turn off our rep as we can uh to maintain our capacitor which is really important and we just got to kill the dissipators first because there's four of them like kind of scary and uh yeah, it just ends up being kind of easy if you understand what you're doing but what's happening right now does look really intense we're low on shields we're taking new pressure we're taking damage it feels intense but if you just calm down take a deep breath see that we're still at 40 percent capacitor 
we can afford to run our shields we're okay a little bit of this aggro is coming off of us and going on our drones alleviating the pressure on our shields we could probably turn this off a little bit and save ourselves a little bit of capacity even though we don't need to yet we're not down to 30 percent uh but we don't want to go below 30 percent armor or 30 percent shields and we'll just kind of continue clearing out the dissipators until they're gone there's also a fire watcher here uh which with our current capacitor stats we can ignore that this that fire watcher uh, but we don't want to ignore those as uh habit uh teaches us not to ignore them uh we'll kill this last dissipator and at this point we're okay our capacitor has survived our shield has survived we're in a really good place now we just clean up the room All right, so this is a this room's a good example uh, when there's a lot of new pressure in a room. You just want to kill the newts first, and you'll be okay. Um, we don't have much to worry about here. Yes, we got yeeted right into them, uh, but if we kill out the things that newt us, we'll be okay. We also don't want to hang out around in this orange pod too much. Uh, but but when you get rooms like this where there's a lot of camp pressure, uh, you turn off your repper and you use it as needed. And the definition of as needed is when your uh, shield gets to about 30%, you just kind of pulse it. Uh, so if as long as we use our repper as needed, uh, we'll always have enough cap to continue repping. We'll just rep for a few cycles, call it good, turn it off again. Uh, and as we remove cap pressure, we'll, we'll get in a better spot. We'll kill the next sentinel here. Go ahead and start repping again, because our shields are getting a little bit low. We're just going to kind of balance rep with... Uh, with our um faster making sure that our faster stays above 30 percent obviously this room's pretty easy with our skills but uh when you do have cap pressure you do want to make sure that you can serve as much cap as possible and your peak shield regen is at about 27 percent so you can just kind of wait it out and uh boost as needed to keep it around there and you'll be okay it's really easy to balance your cap and have a good time and then once all the new pressure is gone you can just leave it on recover your, your uh, shields So they, this is an example of a normal spark lance. Uh, the last example that we showed uh, had us dealing with uh, spark lances that were like right on our head immediately. Uh, this one should go more calmly because they're not going to be right on our head and they're going to take a little bit of time to catch up to us. Uh, th this is how they normally look, but but in the last room, with them being with a white cloud, uh, it was very scary. Uh, and this one will be a lot calmer. Uh, and I just want to show you guys how spark lances normally look. Uh, and it, they're they're really fast. Uh, they're, you just have to kill them quickly. Is the whole key to this room. And you see, they're 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 not on my head this. Time. So I'm I'm having a much better time. Uh, we're we're not instantly dying or anything like we were before. And uh, our 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 flight is a lot calmer when they don't land right on our heads. We don't have to overheat so hard to survive. And we just kind of reduce them, just, just like we did last time. We are taking a little bit more damage than we can tank right now, but not by much. So we'll just slowly bleed through our shields while we remove a couple more of these, and then we'll be fine. And uh, just like that, Spark Lances are no longer as scary as I just portrayed them to be in that last part. Uh, this is what they normally look like. Uh, but you do want to be prepared uh, for those white clouds to kind of have the opponents jump on your head, uh, depending on the on the uh, room. Uh, so yeah, that's... That's it. It's really simple. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next little clip. So this is a really dangerous room uh, for the ship. There's a lot of white clouds uh, that will make them, uh, these spark lances close the gap really fast. And these spark lances are incredibly devastating to the ship because we have very low EM resist. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we kill them as quickly as possible. Uh, the more of these we can remove, the better. And as I said, this cloud configuration is really bad for us because they just got right on our heads uh we are going to be overheating our hardeners to get the most resist at this point because they're right on our head normally we try and run away from them uh but this number of spark lances is very scary so we are overheating and we're taking about twice as much damage as we can reasonably tank at this point i don't care if they switch to the drones we want them to die so if we can remove enough of these quickly enough we'll survive i'm also going to overheat this as we're getting a little bit close here.
continue killing them. Uh, our DPS is underneath our cap amount, so we're going to go ahead and turn these off. Or not turn them off, but we're going to turn off the overheat uh, since now we're in a good spot. Uh, now we're taking less DPS than we can rep, so we're okay. And we killed them really quickly. Notice we took a lot of heat damage. It's very important that in case we get this room more than a couple times in a row, it's very important to carry nanite paste, and that's why we have nanite paste in our cargo. Uh, so as soon as we're done dealing with this, uh, we don't want to do it too soon. Uh, we're going to shut off our tank and start repairing our stuff uh, with the nanite repair paste. And how you do that is really easy. You're just going to right click and repair. You're going to uh, start repairing your passive modules as soon as your heat is done. And then at this point, now that there's no damage, we're going to take off the, the thing that took the most damage. And we're going to get this thing repairing right away. And then once all the damage is gone, once we kill this last spark lance, I'm going to shut everything off and uh, get that repair happening as soon as possible. Uh, and then once this repair is done, we'll be ready for the next room. Uh, so this is a devoted night spawn. We also have a hazard that we got to watch out for. Uh, we have a white pot here. Uh, what we want to do is we want to kind of stay away from the knights and we're going to go for them first. Whenever Sansa spawns, you always want to kill the knights first. Uh, that is always priority. Uh, and this room is really easy if you do that. Uh, and this white cloud is a serious hazard to us. As if the knights go through that cloud, uh, they're going to be right on our heads doing a lot of damage. Devoted knights do uh, E-War to you if they get close. So they, they newt you out. And they also do a lot of damage. Uh, since we're an electrical specific fit without an EM resist mod, uh this room can be very scary so you just kind of don't let them come close to you and i generally take a 90 degree turn from where they're, so they're here and i just kind of go 90 degrees and fly away once the knights are down uh you generally have a good time uh and then i always kill the trappers first because they like to go after the drones um but yeah it's it, it's a really easy room it should be no problem and uh and just kill those knights first and you'll you'll have a good time because they do a lot of damage and they and they need you out and of course these guys do em damage and we are in electricals so we do not want to take the em damage if we can avoid it uh and we just kind of end up being okay as you can see my drones are dying from the trappers so i'm going to go ahead and pull them in and give them a chance to repair and uh throw new drones because i have 10 drones out if i have 10 drones in my bay we don't need to have them take more than shield damage uh, but that's it for the devoted night spot uh, and it's really easy. So this is another uh, devoted night spawn. We have two of them with a bunch of heralds that uh, tracking disrupts. We're going to handle it just like we did the last one. Uh, and we're just going to kind of go 90 degrees to them or perpendicular and try and stay out of clouds and do our best to kill the knights first because the knights hurt and the heralds ruin our tracking. So we just kind of kill them and call it good really easy room uh once they're dead we're, we're pretty much in safety uh but until they die we are in danger as you can tell i took a little while to hit the button to record and now i'm in danger so we're gonna overheat the hard nose oh shit i didn't launch my drones come on hardeners are hot might have to overheat this too so i failed to launch my drones and this is a really good example of how things can go wrong uh, we're going to do our best to continue repping uh, until the first one dies. I think once we kill the first one, we'll be okay. Uh, but I failed to launch my drones and I was just shooting missiles at them. My, my skills are bad, so my missile range isn't good. Uh, and since we're taking so long to kill them, we're going to have to make a turn here. Kind of go up in this direction here. And again, we're trying to fly perpendicular to them. Uh, they go a little bit... Uh, they go about the same speed as us. So if you go a little bit faster, uh, they'll, you'll actually be able to keep range of them and not take a lot of damage. They'll be okay. Uh, we're going to turn off that overheat like now. I really hope that doesn't burn out. We're going to be in a lot of trouble if it does. That is what I call close. I overheated a lot. We took 94% damage and we'll be repairing that after this room. But that was really close. And that's I, I overheated so much because... We uh, launched the drones late and took a lot of extra damage, but now we're okay. Uh, we did almost burn out our repper, which would have made for a really exciting rest of the room. Um, and we cut off the overheat as soon as we could. 